Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I think we're on to part three now of our cat and in this part I'm going to get the um, ears started. I want to get those ears in to really frame her head. Um, if you've got any comments leave them down below. Everything you'll need is also listed below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're not already and we're going to get started. Okay so we're going to lift our graphite and I'm going to start with the orangey ear part rather than the fluff at the front of this ear. And I'm just going to come in with a warm grey one. Now I'm not going to press too hard. Just nice light pressure. And I'm just going to start off with uh, the tip of this ear. So I'm just going to do it tiny bit by bit. So that's the warm grey one. And then over the top I'm going to add my ivory. Again, this is just so that the ivory isn't so yellow when it goes down. I find using the warm greys or, or even the cold greys as your base layer really helps just not, not darken but the colours aren't as vibrant, which is kind of what I'm after. Okay, so I'm going to take my burnt ochre, nice light pressure. And fall in that third direction. Got a bit of a shadow from my light. I'll try to sort that out in a moment. Taking my sanguine because I just feel it's the burnt ochre just isn't orange enough. And again, I'm using really light pressure to build all this up. I'm sorry about this shadow. If I turn the light off, it's too dark. I need to get another light, I think. <laughs> and then I'm just going to take my Vista. And again, I'm using these colours that we've already used within the um, lower part of our cat's head. And then the raw umber. So this is a cat called Callie, um, I know her owner, um, and the reference picture has obviously come from Pixabay, it's linked below, um, and there's lots of other images of Callie that you could use to draw from. And then I'm going back over with my burnt ochre. Just taking that raw umber again on the back of this ear and then I'm just going to go in with my ivory and just burnish to so kind of press these colours into each other really nicely like so. Okay, so I'm going to take my uh, putty eraser again and just lift some of the graphite as I come down this part of the ear the warm grey warm the okay, ivory Okay, I'm going to come back down this side of the ear with the raw umber and again I'm just constantly looking back at the reference photo for the fur direction. My burnt ochre. Back to our sanguine 
Now you can see there is a darker edge going around this uh, ear, which we will add in after. And I'm just blending that upwards. I'm going to take my burnt ochre again. Again, blending upwards. Okay, and then I'm taking my bista. Very lightly. Back to that burnt ochre. I'm bringing in these really nice orange tones. Um, I'm just going to grab my sanguine again. Picking up my brown ochre now. I think this colour is probably going to be nicer than the raw umber. So I'm kind of changing it over from the raw umber. Um, and then I'm just going to take my warm grey one again. Blend there. Okay, um, I'm just going to grab my Caput Mortar. Very light pressure. I'm just feeling like this just... I'm not happy with just the Sanguine there, so I'm just going to come in with a uh, Caput Mortar a little bit. And then go over with a Burnt Ochre again. Okay, and then I'm going to take this put mortem using the sharp edge along the edge of this ear where we're starting to get that darker marking. Now it's not outlining that ear, you've got some of the lighter fur shining through. I'm just bringing this all in with the put mortem. And then I'm going to go over the Caput Mortem with my Burnt Umber. And I'm also going to bring some of this Burnt Umber down this ear part here as well. Put my Brown Ochre again. that down um, and then I've got my dark sepia um, and I'm just going to very lightly add in those tiny little markings along the top edge of this ear here and I'm using the dark sepia because I don't need to press too hard and you're getting those colours in nicely okay picking up my uh, putty rubber again And I'm just lifting that bit of graphite and then taking my warm grey one as the base layer. Right, just had to sharpen mine. So I'm just coming down where the darker fur is. We've got quite a light uh, border, I guess, is the way I'm going to describe it. So I'm kind of ignoring that for now because I want to just focus on the fur. So I'm just going to build... Uh, bring down this uh, section of the ear. It's also coming into the uh, head, so we will need to blend this so it looks like it's part of um, our cat. I'm going to get my ivory. Oh, the 
top of this. Right, so I am going to start with the burnt ochre and I'm going to start from this head and just map in where the head kind of goes and then I can bring up the fur around this ear with the burnt ochre. Now building up this ear is going to be lots of sharp pencil strokes and just lots of layers to really build up the depth of the fur. Okay, um, my, I'm going to use my brown ochre down here. Okay, and then my burnt sienna. The burnt ochre. I'm just kind of fiddling again with the top of this ear but if you notice when you're drawing and whatever you're drawing and you notice something just doesn't look right to you go back and fix it there and then otherwise you may forget about it um, it's just the way that I find easiest to work as well just to fix it when I see it otherwise it will annoy me <laughs> right I'm going to take my uh, I want my gold um, hang on Nice sharp pencil strokes. And then my Bista. And you can see now how this ear is really starting to take shape and look like it was starting to connect it to the head. Burnt ochre. Again, just to help blend these colours together. Taking my burnt umber and I'm just following the shape of these darker parts now. Now we have got some white hairs coming over from this ear. I'm just kind of ignoring them because I will add them in at the end. And again, I'm just kind of doing little V shapes so that it looks like that this ear is behind the head hair there. And then I'm going to take my Kaput Morton. And then again with my Bista. And then I'm just going over the top once again with the burnt ochre to really bring out those ginger tones a little bit more. And my ivory. Okay, I'm going to take my, uh, just go back to my uh, burnt umber. Just build up. I might bring in the, uh, if I use my dark sepia, just very lightly. Blend that in. 
Okay, and then I'm just going to take my stool without banging everything, my slice tool. Just bring that in like so. And then just bring in some of those hairs. Okay, right, so we now have this uh, really lighter area. So I'm going to take my warm grey one. I'm not pressing too hard because I want it to be quite light, but we are going to go over the top of this as well to push into the paper. Now I haven't erased that graphite line, so I need to just grab my putty eraser and lift that up. And bring that round again and follow in the fur direction so that we get the form of this ear correct. And then you want my cold grey one. And with the cold grey one, I'm just coming over the top of this ear. A nice neutral grey and then I'm going to use my white to really push the pigment into the paper <sighs> and then I'm going to take my uh, brown ochre and just lightly add some little fur details coming from this the tanned coloured fur, the orange fur, and my ivory. Kind of running this ivory along the edge. Like so. Okay, so again, I'm just going to come in and lift this graphite. So we've got some light, nice fluffy hair coming out of this ear. So I'm going to take my warm grey wool. And again, following that fur direction, but I'm really loosening my pressure. But lightening my pressure towards the end so we get that really soft look. And again, it doesn't matter if your fur, your pencil strokes aren't the exact same as the reference photo. You just want that look of what the ear fluff is doing. Again, I'm sure there's a, a better technical name for it, but we, we'll go with ear fluff. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take my nugget. Um, oh, I haven't got it out. I'm looking for it. I haven't. We haven't used it yet. <laughs> okay. And this is coming from the bottom of the ear. Very light pressure, and you can see I'm lightening my pressure at the end so that it gets really fluffy and light. And then I'm going to take my brown ochre because the tips of the this fur here is very yellowy. And again, I'm leaving little gaps between here because that's what I'm seeing on the photo. Very light pressure. And then I'm going to take my gold. And the gold is really just going to start to add a little bit of detail into these clumps. Remember, we're thinking of this fur in the ear as clumps and clusters. And then I'm going to take my uh, warm grey one again. A bit of a harder pressure now just to really blend this fluff. And 
Right, and now we can start to darken it up a little bit more. So I'm going to take my um, nugget again. And it's just about building up the layers very lightly, very gently. Um, my Vista. Oops, the brown ochre on the tips. And then I'm going to take my uh, one grey four. Like so. And then back over everything with my warm grey one. And then what I'm going to do is take my Tombow eraser, make sure you've got a nice clean edge. And then I'm just going to push down and through some of this. And this will lift some of the pigment. But it'll also help give you that soft look to the fur that we're after. And you can pull it, drag it outwards. And then I'm just going to run my ivory again. Over the top. Back to that gold. And then I'm just going to use my white again, just to push the pigment into the paper. And again, this will give you that nice smooth faded look on the edges as well. Okay, I'm just going to go back to my, actually I'm going to take my beige red. And run that beige red. Just along the edge here. Circular motions just to help blend it outwards. Like so. Okay, I'm going to start outlining um, the next ear. So I'm just going to lift some graphite. And I'm going to take my uh, warm grey one as the base layer. Now I'm getting this ear mapped in first before we come down the back of the head. Because I want this ear in so that we can kind of bring the head together. So I'm just bringing one grey one. Okay, I'm going to take my gold and again we're curve following the curvature of the ear. That's curving round and down now. And then I'm kind of doing little small scribbly motions to create that detailing on the ear. And then I'll go, so I'm going to take my warm grey two over the top, especially along this bottom edge. And in here, so I have my uh, ivory for the top part of the ear. Okay, I'm just going to take my burnt umber. Just back on this part of the ear there. And then my slice tool, because this ear is obviously in front of the other one, so add a few little stray white hairs following the shape of the ears, of course. And that will just help create the effect that this ear is in front of the other one. 
Okay, so the inside of this ear is quite dark, so we will build up to that. Uh, one grey one as the base layer. Now we are going to be building uh, skin, because uh, it's the inside of the ear that we can see. I'm just going to go over the top with the, pink, uh, the beige red, so we get that pinkish tone. And then I'm going to start building the depth of this ear. So we're going to start with some little ear fluff <laughs> first, so I'm going to take my nugget. On the kaput mortar, you can see this bit. I'm acting like fur, so I'm using uh, pencil strokes to create the fur like effect. Uh, the Vista can blend in out. Um, and then I'm just going to come in with the uh, Venetian red. And the light red violet. Uh, this is light magenta, sorry. And then I'm going to use my beige red. Firm pressure to help blend. Um, back to the Kaput Morton. Um, and I'm also just going to bring my burnt umber as well. Okay, and then the Indian red. So you can see I'm using quite a few tones in this ear just to really build it up. Really gently. Um, and then I'm grabbing my oops, slice tool. Once again, just to add some of these bits of fur. In the ear. Okay. Okay, so as we come down this ear, it's getting really kind of crazy and I'm not quite sure yet how I want to tackle it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my one grey one down here. So there may be pieces that you get um, like drawings that you have to do as commissions or just that you want to tackle and you're not quite sure how to tackle an area that's perfectly fine um, everybody goes through it the best thing to do is to uh, move on to an area that you know how to tackle uh, taking my ivory now that was the warm grey one uh, then the ivory so that's what I'm doing. I'm doing this area because I know how to tackle it. And while I'm looking, I'm kind of building up the areas around the difficult area in the hope that once these areas are built up, I'll, I'll build up that confidence to go in and do the tricky area. I'm going to get my gold. And I actually, I think if I build up the areas around the area where there's loads of hair, it will make it easier for me to tackle uh, that area as well. Take my uh, one grey two. Okay. Okay, I've got my uh, one grey one as well here. So I'm just building up the shape um, of her ear. Excuse me. And I'm going to bring it down the back. I've got quite a few nice markings going on down here. So I'm just bringing uh, this down the back of her ear. And 
Okay, so I'm mo moving it down to where I can see this darker spot, just as a point of reference so I know what I'm doing. So this is the warm grey one as the base layer, and then taking the ivory over that warm grey one. Okay, and then I'm going to take my burnt ochre. And we're now just going to look at building up the back of this ear. So I'm going to try and make sure you don't get that shadow. Using very light pressure with a burnt ochre. Okay. So going in with the sanguine on the top half here. Very sharp pencil strokes. Um, and then the brown ochre. Okay. And then I'm taking my raw umber. Light pressure. And the uh, India red. And then I'm going to just run the ivory over the top of that. Now we've got a darker marking, so I'm just going to use my burnt umber first of all. To come in and just map that in. On the back of that ear and my brown ochre to help blend just going to take my uh, dark sepia going to press lightly because i don't want it to be too dark okay i'm just going to bring my uh, burnt umber in again just down here i want this marking to be a bit darker this is what i see as i've been working on i can see that this area just needs to be a little darker Your your uh, markings might be fine. Don't worry if you if you're happy. I just wanted them to be a little darker on my drawing. Back to my uh, warm grey one. It's the base layer. And then the ivory. And then I'm just going to take my burnt umber first to map in that darker mark in here. My burnt ochre. Back to the burnt umber. And again, following the shape of this ear. My uh, sanguine. And then that Venetian red. And then I'm going to just use my eye, uh, actually I'm just going to do a brown ochre over the top to blend. And then the ivory. Okay. Now 
my walnut brown just want to really deepen some of this marking uh, and then that burnt umber again like so and then that burnt sienna I'm just trying to get that nice tone along that back of this ear Okay, back to my warm grey one. I'm just going to map in this bright, it's like a reddish orange area, like the inner of the ear. Because I know we're not going to get the whole ear done in this part. I like to keep the tutorials to an hour. Um, so we're not going to get this, this part of the ear done, but I want this section mapped in so that we know what we're doing. Uh, my beige red. Okay, then taking my dark red, very light pressure, there's so many colours going on in this ear, do you want to just slowly build them up? Um, and then I'm going to take, um, um, okay, I think I'm going to take my green gold. Um, I was thinking raw umber, but I think we'll go green gold. If you don't have the green gold, use your raw umber. Um, I'm just going to run the sanguine as well. And then back to the dark red. So there's a lot of colours used in this part of the tutorial. But it's all the colours that I can see. So you just want to, when you're doing these tutorials, you want to use those colours you can see. If you don't see the same colours as me, that's fine. If you see more colours than me, that's fine. Just try and use the colours you see. Um, and then I'm just going to use my Venetian red. And you then use my ivory over the top. Oops. To blend and smooth out. Because we want this to look smooth. It is obviously skin. We'll get the fur in around it. Um soon so i'm just going to bring my warm grey warm as the base layer ivory Right, so we have a nice darker marking. So I'm just going to start off with the burnt umber just to map it in. And here, again, I'm following that shape. So if it's curving up and round, I'm blending into that reddish area and curving it up and round. And blending outwards. And then I'm going to, excuse me, uh, take my Bista. And then I want my dark sepia. Now that I'm happy with how I've marked the shape. My uh, warm grey Four. 
into the bay thread. Um, and then I'm going to take my bister again. Follow the curvature of this part of the ear. The burnt ochre. Add a bit of that orange tone. And then my Indian red. And just blending outwards. ivory back to that dark sepia and then my uh, dark red again just really trying to get that nice differentiation between these two sections and the bister Um, and then I'm just going to use that green gold again in this middle section because I want it to pop a little bit more. Okay, back to the burnt ochre. And then I'm going to use the Kaput Martin. Blend that. Um, picking up my walnut brown. Just bringing that down here as well. Okay, right. I am also just going to take my uh, bister, and I'm just seeing little bits that I just want to add or change to so I'm just going to run the vista along here again this will all change as I bring in this part of the ear I just want to add in these little bits now um, and then I'm going to take my dark sepia now very very lightly just adding in those little dots that we can see. And my brown ochre. Okay, my uh, warm grey two. And then I'm going to take my gold again. Like so. And then I can bring in that slice tool. Now that I've added a few more layers, and just bring out some of the whiter hairs. <sighs> Again, just adding to the texture of um, Callie's fur. And I'm just going to bring in a little bit. Along there. Okay. So.
So I'm going to leave this part of the tutorial here because I want to focus uh, the next part solely on building up the rest of this ear. Um, so it's been a bit of a shorter tutorial, but um, short ones in between the longer ones, I guess. <laughs> um, so I hope you've enjoyed this part. The next part will be out um, very soon and I will chat to you all soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Bye everybody.